Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times. My last day at Doomsday Eco Lodge in St. Croix Virgin Islands. It is Tuesday, March 10th, 2015, but guys, we're going to pretend that it is Wednesday, March 11th, 2015. I'm going to be too busy tomorrow to bring you my Wednesday climate change meltdown roundup rant. So a day early, because I got my six stories where each Wednesday or Tuesday, I go on the pages of the mainstream media to bring you six more pieces of evidence that this planet is descending into a burning lake of fire while, where was it, uh, North Carolina, digging out from the snow. Uh, anyway, we're going to start, where should we romp around the planet? I want to spend some time, um, I'm going to wrap up in Thailand. I was going to start out there, but I, we're going to end up there in Thailand. Let's start out in Alaska, where... This morning, Associated Press, finally, some snow for Iditarod mushers. And they're talking about this big dog sled race up there in Alaska every year. Well, I guess they should have moved the Iditarod <coughs> dog sled race to North Carolina <coughs> because... They, they already had to move the route and all of this shit because there has been no snow as mushers had to embark on new route across Alaska to find some snow. All right, finally some snow in Alaska. Winter has finally cooperated with a uh, ditterod and more than... Four inches of new snowfall fell on Sunday. Getting one musher to quote, seems a little bit more like the Iditarod when you actually have some snow around. Warm temperatures have played havoc with the dog race all winter long as the, sta as the same stalled jet stream that buried the eastern seaboard in snow has left Alaska unseasonably warm and dry, which I think was pretty much a repeat of last year when there were plenty of days last year, as I recall, when it was a hell of a lot colder in Austin, Texas last winter than in Anchorage, Alaska. Anyway, uh, okay, from Alaska, let's go. To, I don't know where this article I meant to tying in with this. I guess I forgot to flag it. Talking about, do you believe were more cold weather records set this winter in January and February in the United States? or hot or heat records, more cold records or heat records this year in the U.S. If you said cold records, got one thing to tell you. If you believe that more cold weather records were reported this winter than hot weather, got one thing to tell you. Anyway, I don't know what happened to that article, but there's plenty. Let's go from Alaska all the way down to Florida. All sorts of uh, coverage on this one. There must be six versions of this one. I went with the Christian Science Monitor's version of this story. Can Florida prepare for climate change without saying the words? Florida Department of Environmental Protection has been banned from using terms like climate change and global warming, according to a new investigation. In Florida, climate change is the global phenomenon that must not be named. Since 2011, 
the State Department of Environmental Protection employees have been banned from using the term climate change as well as global warming and sustainability in, uh, in their work according to a new report and sea level rise was banned for three years but I guess it's been let back in uh, yeah, you know, and of course, the policy went into effect after Republican Governor Rick Scott first took office in 2011. Uh, of course, Rick Scott, a well-known climate change denier, and so right before uh, Rick Scott, climate change denier, Rick Scott took office and banned the use of the words climate change, global warming, and sea level rise. I guess the month before a December 2010 report on sea level rise from the Florida Oceans and Coastal Council stated that it is, quote, widely accepted that human activities can impact global climate patterns and quote the potential risks to Florida's natural resources and our economy compel us to seek a thorough understanding of possible impacts on Florida and to provide current and future generations of Floridians with the information necessary to adjust to them. The report said that sea level rise, quote, is not science fiction, a science fiction scenario, but a reality. One month later, Republican Governor Scott moved into the governor's mansion and banned the use of the term sea level rise. And quoting Harold Wanless, a geologist and professor from University of Miami, said it will be hard for the state government to plan for climate change if its officials cannot talk about it. <clears throat> Quote, you have to start real planning and I have seen absolutely none of that from the current governor. It is beyond ludicrous to deny using the term climate change. It is criminal at this point. Yes, it is criminal to be the governor of Florida denying climate change and sea level rise. Okay, I guess this one is uh, all over the world from Reuters News. This is the latest climate change news out of the UN. Bureaucratic infighting hampers action on droughts. Infighting between competing government departments has weakened the world's ability to tackle droughts, a UN official said as scientists meet for the latest bullshit climate talks down there in Mexico. Uh, most governments do not have a separate ministry to handle issues related to water, droughts, or land management said this a senior water resource officer for the UN anyway uh, and, and take a wild guess where what area well, uh, first globally globally desertif desertification affects 250 million people 
and one third of the planet's land surface more than 10 billion acres. 10 billion acres. Heading into desert, take a wild guess which part of this planet is more affected by this than anybody. Africa is most impacted by desertification, the UN says, with two-thirds of the continent classified as desert or dry land as climate change pushes deserts to expand in Africa an estimated 60 million 60 million people are expected to migrate from parched lands in sub-Saharan Africa to North Africa and Europe in the next 20 years and about half of the world's recent armed conflicts were at least partially caused by this shit and many analysts believe global warming will intensify violent strife. Quote, this is this UN guy, the situation is expected to get worse by all climate change models. The desert is extending and very few countries have the right integrated policies to prepare for drought or to manage it after it occurs. 60 million sub-Saharan Africans headed to Europe. But there's a few sub-Saharan Africans are staying right where they are in Kenya. This is how Kenyan farmers, farmers are responding to climate change in Kenya from the Christian Science Monitor. <clears throat> With less rain, farmers in Kenya quit, quit growing food crops to cash in on legal drug. The government has struggled to come up with ways to make traditional farming more appealing as farmers turn to growing mira, mira sometimes known as cat, K-H-A-T, a legal narcotic that needs little water and has a steady demand. So uh, this is zeroing in on farmer Omar Kutara who used to grow, whose land used to be covered with fruit trees and rows of barley and wheat waved in the wind, but today the stiff branches of mira plants is what he's uh, into. Mira or cat is a plant chewed as a narcotic. Years of water shortages have prompted farmers in northern Kenya, one of the only places in the arid region that can support agriculture, to abandon food crops in favor of cat. And there you go. While the government wants to curb Mira's displacement of food crops, farmers welcome the steady income provided by the drug. But the financial gains come at a cost for the community. Less local food in Kenyan markets and more Mira use among youth as it becomes more available and with low rainfall levels believed to be the new normal, the trends are going to be hard to reverse. But guys, uh, I want to finish off this rant with this absolutely hilarious story from the techno-utopians, the bullshit 
climate change story of the week, hands down from the mainstream media, Yahoo News. This coming from Reuters News. This one about sea level rise in Thailand. Anybody concerned about sea level rise in Thailand, Miami, New York City, don't worry. Your problems are over. The techno-utopians have come up with the answer as Thailand tests floating homes in regions grappling with floods. Just put your house on floats. Your problem's off. Uh, this is coming from Ayutthaya, Thailand. Nestled among hundreds of identical white and brown two-story homes crammed in this neighborhood for factory workers is a house with a trick. Hidden under the house and its wraparound porch, porch are steel pontoons filled with styrofoam. These pontoons can lift the structure 10 feet off the ground if this area, two hours north of Bangkok, floods <coughs> as it did in 2011 when two-thirds of the country was inundated. The $86,000 Amphibious house is one way architects, developers, and governments around the world are brainstorming solutions as climate change brews storms, floods, and rising sea levels that threaten communities in low lying coastal cities. This is architect Chuta Sentufan of Site Specific Limited, the firm that designed and built the amphibious house for Thailand's National Housing Authority. Quote, we can try to build walls to keep the water out but that might not be a sustainable, permanent solution. It is better not to fight nature, but to work with nature. And amphibious architecture is one answer. Let's see, Asia is the region most affected by all these disasters with 714,000 deaths between 2014 and 2013 and some 2.1 billion people live in the region's fastest growing cities and towns and many of these urban areas are located in vulnerable, low-lying coastal areas and river deltas with the poorest and most marginalized communities often waterlogged year-round. So anyway, obviously it begs the question if you're living in a, in a tar paper hut, how are you going to afford $86,000 to build your amphibious house when you're making $1 a day. Don't worry about it. This is this group called Water Studio for the people who don't have the $86,000. Water Studio has designed a shipping container that floats on a simple frame 
containing 15,000 plastic bottles. 15,000 plastic bottles. Water Studios' aim is to test these containers in Bangladesh slums, giving communities flood-safe floating structures that would not take up land, interfere with municipal rules, or threaten landowners who don't want permanent new slums. Quote, this guy from Water Studio, many cities worldwide have sold their lands to developers and now we go to them, when we go to them we say, you don't have land anymore. You have water. If your community is affected by water, the safest place to be is on the water. Yeah, yeah, you and Jesus. You and Jesus, if you, I, you can't argue with that. Uh, if your choice is to be under the water or on the water, I'm going to take the 15,000 plastic bottles bundled up into a big float. So we're going to have 2.1 billion people clinging to their plastic bottles. It, it, guys, am I the only one on this planet seeing the sick humor in this? The, the, the vision of 2.1 billion people clinging to rafts of plastic bottles. Anyway, this wraps up this week's Climate Change Meltdown Roundup rant and my very last rant from Doomsday Eco Lodge, and I am gonna have to go pack up Doomsday Tent, my home, for the past two months. I gotta pack her up because South by Southwest Music Festival starts in Austin, Texas, one week from today. And it is the biggest party of the year. And Hambone ain't going to miss that. So this is your old Doomsday tourist reporting from Doomsday Eco Lodge, St. Croix Virgin Islands. Bye, guys. See you in Austin.